Live from the old National Bank State Street studio. This is WMVP WSHE HD2 Chicago. A good karma brand's radio station. Welcome in to Bears Weekly, a Chicago Bears Network production. Download the Chicago Bears official app, brought to you by Verizon, to follow the team on the go. Bears Weekly is brought to you by Advocate Healthcare, Athletico Physical Therapy, Beth Rivers, CDW, Connie's Pizza, IGS Energy, and Miller Lite. Here are your hosts, Jeff Choniak, a.k.a. the Mayor of Bearsville, and his sidekick, Tom the Surfmaster Thayer. Well, you got to shake off one of the toughest defeats you're ever going to suffer and get ready for more national tension. Next Monday night, Bears-Vikings in Minnesota. The Vikings also coming off a tough, tough loss in Denver. Welcome to Bears Weekly. Jeff and Tom with you. Thanks to producers Jordan Treadup and Dan Barilli from the Bears. And tonight at the ESPN 1000 Studios, we've got Kevin Zipak and Sean Graney helping us out. The executive producer of the Bears Radio Network is Eric Ostrowski. Got a full lineup tonight, Tom. Got a full lineup. Coming up 6-10, Bears tight end Cole Komet. And at the bottom of the hour, uh, how about this for a special guest, the one and only Spice Adams. Uh, good, to, good to talk to the former Bears defensive <laughs> tackle and former second-round pick of the 49ers. Yeah, looking forward to it, Mayor Joniak. And, uh, you know, one thing about it is I think the Bears are going to be a national story whether they're on Monday Night Football or not. And I think that's kind of the topic of discussion if you're listening on all the radio shows on ESPN. Um, it, it It's kind of a hard subject to leave the airwave. So it's something that we're going to have to live with uh, throughout the end of the season. And um, I think the Bears players should embrace it because there's not a lot ex- expected of them. But then they should beat the odds and they should beat those uh, uninflated expectations in going to Minnesota on Monday night and bring home a victory. They've been underdogs. Every, um, I, I mean, I, have they been a favorite in any game this season? I don't even remember now. I, I, so they've been I don't underdogs all season. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're going to expect pretty raucous crowd. They feel they've got some life still, even though the Lions now three clear them in the division. There's only two teams in football with less than three losses this year. They are the Philadelphia Eagles, and they are the Detroit Lions. And uh, the Lions rally to beat the Bears, obviously. It's been already diced up quite a bit, and it's only Tuesday. Uh, but, you know, some of the takeaways, we have to we have to talk about Justin Fields. I mean, is this now going to be – Justin Fields, is this what the plan is for the rest of the season? Are they going to use the the legs and run 18 times a game with him or 10 to 12 times or 15 to 18 times? Because as we talked about on the podcast, the Bears, et cetera, podcast this week, uh, he, he seems to really come to life when he makes a big play with his legs that helps make him a big play in the passing game. Yeah, you know, I like to see what Justin did in the first drive of the game, but I want Justin to be able to run into the last drive of the game. When I look at those two plays that they handed off to Khalil Herbert and they failed to get any movement, and then they went for that long attempt downfield to Tyler Scott, to me, I cannot even fantasize about having the athleticism of Justin Fields. But for me, from what I've seen out of Justin Fields, you get in that position again and you got to put the ball into his hands 100%. I think he can outrun anybody to the edge. He can gain yards around the corner. And if you see a defensive uh, front that's stacked like that, I think Justin has got to be willing to keep it and go. So from the beginning of the game, he was exciting. But he has to be equally as exciting at the end of the game. Right now, 1,484 yards run of the football since the start of 22, number one among all quarterbacks. We talked about this all the way back to the offseason, what our anticipation was and expectations for Justin, and that was to trigger from the pocket with more accuracy and getting those uh, layup throws, so to speak, but also on that 39-yard touchdown to D.J. Moore. You're not going to find a better deep ball. You're not going to find a more targeted, accurate throw and a step up in the pocket. And he had, had a moment to actually step into his throw and let it rip. We still want to see more of that as well. Yeah, and, you know, we saw some of that even outside the pocket earlier in the game. But if you want to take one play and put it under the microscope and say, look, this is what we want for the future, it's never always, it's not always going to work out that way. However, when you look at the structure of that play after the snap of the ball, it was perfectly done, and the result of it was a touchdown in perfect ball placement. So, I mean, there's a lot of great things you can say about Justin individually in that play, but also the assistance of all the teammates. 
We're going to get into the Vikings a little deeper, but uh, on the surface, you got to go back to, you know, you got to stop Daniel Hunter. Uh, you got to stop Wanham because he has great games against the Bears for some reason. He's got seven and a half sacks of his in his career against the Bears. D.J. Wanham on the outside. They've had some injuries on defense, obviously. I don't know who's going to be back and who isn't. They just lost Lowry now. He's got a torn pec, so he's out, so they're bringing guys in. Uh, but making sure that he has time to make those throws, and he did not run a lot in that first half against Minnesota, and uh, the pressure was there, though. The pressure's got to be stopped, and he's got to make them pay. Well, on, on week six, uh, the game against the Minnesota Vikings, you, it's going to be a great judgment of the improvements you make. This is the first time you're going to see the same opponent twice in one year. The Bears had 113-yard pass, pa- passing yards. They gave up five sacks. They had 160-plus yards rushing to less than 100 yards rushing by the Minnesota Vikings. D.J. Moore had five catches. He was targeted eight times. Cole Komet had two catches. was only targeted three times. So when you look at the development of all those players, since that point, the running game is still solid. You got to, I think the, the pass protection has improved. The targeting to uh, D.J. Moore has to go up, and it has to go up and stay continuous throughout the game for Cole Komet. If you do those things within the game plan, I think that you're going to provide yourself a better opportunity to win the game because when you look at offensive performance by Minnesota, I think they had 220 yards offense. The Bears at 275, something like that. So I think the Bears uh, are, you know, if they make that improvement in the pass protection and yards in the passing game, they can go in there and they can go toe-to-toe with them. Yeah, Vikings uh, have a pretty good run defense. It's only allowing 3.4 yards of carry, but the Bears did manage to run the ball well in that game at Soldier Field. And again, they've had a little bit of degradation defensively on uh, on their uh, lineup. Marcus Davenport, you mentioned uh, uh, the, the linebacker Jordan Hicks. I don't know if he's going to have compartment syndrome uh, against New Orleans, and uh, we certainly know remember that from the Brian Erlacher game, remember? So that's uh, like an expansion in the in the uh, area where, and I'm not a doctor, so I'm talking out of school here, but it's it's something that's serious and it's dangerous and it could really be a problem. Uh, but uh, that game, other than Philadelphia, so you took it to two quarterbacks with the highest number of yards rushing against the Vikings this year. At Philadelphia Week 2, they gave up 259 yards and against the Bears, 162. The only other 100-yard game the rest of the season in the 11-game season for Minnesota was Atlanta, uh, at 110 that was on the road that was on the road philly was on the road now they're at home yeah different and, ball know, game brian flores the defensive coordinator is a different attacker at home than he is on the road and daniel hunter is chasing a significant bonus with the amount of sacks that he can get throughout in the season and um i think as much money as the players make these days when you have that financial attachment to numbers it kind of gives you a little bit more incentive to uh, try to complement the defensive front your coach calls. Yeah, he's at a sack in every game but one this season. So what's he what's he chasing, if I may ask? Um, so what's he got, nine and a half or something like that? No, he's got ten and a half. Okay, ten he's and a half. He's got ten and a half sacks. Go, like it goes up. Oh, no, like wait, 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 I'm wrong. He's got 12 sacks. Okay, it goes up incrementally like a million dollars, you know, after he achieves these certain numbers amount of sacks. So – uh, you know, he, he's, you know, he's chasing the number and, uh, you know, All right, well. I, I guess that's a nice structure of his contract. And when he was holding out at the start of the year, this was some of the built in opportunities for production and money. All right. We're going to take our first break. When we return, we'll be joined by Cole Komet, the Bears veteran tight end. This is Bears Weekly on ESPN Chicago and the Bears Radio Network. This is Bears Weekly with the voice of the Bears for 23 years. Jeff Joniak on the Bears Radio Network. This segment of Bears Weekly is brought to you by LGS Energy. Jeff Joniak, Tom Thayer, joined shortly by Cole Komet of the Bears tight end as the Bears get ready for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, some stuff today. Uh, you know, it's funny how things go. Well, the Bears added Adrian Colbert to the practice squad. Veteran safety has been here before. But, you know, you, you think about the life of a guy who's just just trying to make it and stick to a roster, right? Darrington Evans. He did such a great job when he came to the Bears. They had to let him go once Khalil Herbert came back because there's too many running backs, not enough room at the end, and then he gets claimed again by the Miami Dolphins. So uh, they lose a guy. 
Savan Ahmed goes on injured reserve. The cycle of this league is, and I'm always respectful, Tom, of the guys like Darrington or guys that sometimes get waived 10, 12, 13, and they're still available to come back and at a moment's notice <laughs> disrupt their life and go get a job. Well, what's more amazing to you, Joe Flacco being signed by the Cleveland Browns, a guy that's been out of football for a couple of years and that has over a decade of years of service at the quarterback position. But that's the thing about it. Whether you're a backup on the sidelines or you're waiting in the wings or you're a guy that still believes in his ability, it's the, it's the preparation. It's being prepared. It's staying in shape. It's doing everything you need to do to be ready when your number is possibly dialed. Yeah, and that goes for just about every situation you can think of. Same story for the the Vikings. Sheldon Day comes off the practice squad. They've got all these injuries, so he could be in the lineup against the Bears uh, in that building, uh, Minnesota. And it will be rocking, and it's going to be interesting to see how the the home crowd greets the Bears because uh, that place is uh, not only beautiful, but it will get loud. And and the surest way to get those guys loud is what we talked about in the first segment. They start putting pressure, and Brian Flores just had a big grin on his face today talking about how much he loves his defense, he loves these guys, and it hit him that you know they only have six more games to go with these guys barring playoffs, and the roster changes so much, but he's really gotten to know these guys. You rarely see that man with a smile on his face. He has a smile on his face about the way hard, how hard they play. Yeah, but, you know, the thing about it is you go back to last week, and I thought that would be the most hostile environment that the Bears have faced this year and maybe in Detroit, Bear history in Detroit. But the Bears took the crowd out of it with that first drive success, and the crowd really wasn't a factor until the later part, latter part of the game when things started turning their way. So the Bears, they can still control the crowd if they have success that continues throughout the game. It's, that's one way of, of earning the crowd out of the game. Uh, let's also talk about uh, the play of uh, uh, Cairo Santos because I think it's it's been his best year. He's been great with the Bears overall, but he's missed just one field goal, one extra point. I was blocked sixth in the NFL at 95%. He's one of five kickers in the NFL, perfect from 50-plus. And then 97 field goals as a Bear. So he's 91.4% since coming to the Bears. That's the fourth best in the NFL. All that vitriol for, for, for a few years there after Robbie Gold trying to find a kicker, and they found one. And I, and I love the way – and his kickoffs. Kickoffs have been great. You know, kickers, I always look at the big picture. I rarely look game to game or just a year. When you come in with the pressure that Cairo had on him, when you come to a new team, you come into the most difficult outdoor kicking stadium that you can kick in, and then you can have the success that he's had. Uh, I really admire him because he's gotten better. And it's like he said, it's not because he's gained enormous leg strength. It may be a change of technique or leg speed. So I, I love everything that Cairo has been able to accomplish since he's been here and his his mates that whether, you know, whoever is snapping and holding for him, they do as equally as good and as important job to help the kicker do his job. All right, let's talk defense to the linebackers. I think they've done a great job, uh, and they're getting better every week. Tremaine Edmonds, uh, I was thrilled to see him get on the field uh, despite having a, a little bit of an issue, and he got on there, worked out before the game. T.J. Edwards playing at a very high level and also always reliable with his, uh, his work as Jack Sanborn. That's got to be a fun room to be a part of because when you look at the big picture and you think of the day-to-day meetings and you look at the guys going out to practice, there are a group of guys that really like each other. They feed off of each other, and they try to help each other improve. And that's what I like to see out of veterans that are newly aboard the Chicago Bears and then some of these young guys that they're going to help develop that. You know, when Sewell and Dylan Cole and these guys get their opportunities, I think they're going to be veteran-ready uh, when their number's called, like we just talked about some of the other guys around the league. Yeah, Edwards at 119 tackles now. The line is starting to really pop with tackles for loss. The quarterback hits. He started blitzing in that Minnesota game. And uh, that led, led to the what should have been, in my opinion, but it wasn't. It was called a fumble, but the, the hit on Kirk Cousins that Tremaine Edmonds uh, dove for. Uh, I, just, I just love his attitude. Love his attitude. We talked to him last week, of course, on this show. And uh, he's just a... Uh, just a solid football player with a love of the team and uh, plenty of guys on it, you know, plenty of guys on it that way. You know, that that's the thing about it is, um, you know, when I came aboard the Bears, I came a- aboard a team that had just got beat in the NFC championship game. And I didn't know if there was a lot of room for opportunity. 
They went out and they offered uh, TJ Edwards an opportunity to come play for his home team, and it needed inspiration and it needed his leadership, and he's provided everything that they went out and got. And um, I I like the way that he's absorbed the local pressure and how he's exceeded some of uh, the numbers that we thought, or, you know, I don't know if we thought he could, but, you know, he's proving us right. Okay, the wins haven't come. The, the NFC North wins haven't come. Uh, they've given up a couple fourth-quarter leads. They've played some really tight games, as every team in the league does. But do you see growth here? Do you see, I mean, we both agree that the team is better than it was when the season started. And as long as we continue to see development in the right direction for Justin Fields and the offense, it's not just him, obviously, it's everybody. Uh, you know, I, was, I, I just lost my train of thought for a minute because I was thinking last night about Mahomes and the Chiefs and they're bemoaning the fact that they're, they're, touch, they're not scoring touchdowns, but they lead the NFL and drop passes from a great quarterback who's putting it right on the money. So, you know, that's why you talk about it's not just the QB. You could have the greatest QB, but if they're not catching the football and not scoring touchdowns, they're going to have some trouble, and they're having some trouble. Uh, listen, growth is there. Growth is ever evident. Growth you see. I, I think that the conversation has been more about learning how to close out the fourth yeah. quarter than it is lack of growth in this team. We've seen the way that the defensive line has grown throughout the season and then how the linebacker position is grown together with the defensive line to match up with the defensive backs are providing them. And then you see the growth of Justin Fields and the continuous growth of the running game. But it's about making sure that in the fourth quarter they show the growth that they've shown in the first three quarters. And that's going to be a part, an uh, important part of their future. And we'll talk about the growth of the offensive line when we come back, and we'll hear from uh, Cole Komet as well and Anthony Adams coming up here tonight. This is Bears Weekly on ESPN Chicago and the Bears Radio Network. This is Bears Weekly with the voice of the Bears for 23 years, Jeff Joniak on the Bears Radio Network. Go physical therapy, visit athletico.com to request an in-clinic or virtual appointment and start feeling better tomorrow. Tom, the pastronaut, will be on the field uh, as the Bears. You know who that is? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Joshua Dobbs. I, I think that's one of the best nicknames. You think Berman might? Uh, that would be a Berman thing. Maybe he created it. I don't know. Well, I, and, I and for those s- who are yeah, I go got to say, I did hear Hampton use it today on our show, so I I got a kick out of it, too. I don't care who says it. It's funny to yeah. me. Yeah, because you and I are not astrophysicists. <laughs> well, you're not. <laughs> well, neither are you, my friend. Neither I are you. But I will tell you this. You're an idea, man. That's for sure. You've created more things, I uh, plans, items, technology right. that has never seen the light of day. Right. I wish I, I wish I was inspired. I'm a C student. I only have the idea. I rarely follow through. That's why I've oh, only made gosh. I've only made model rockets. I've never really investigated how they work. Well, he was an aeronautical engineer. So, what do we think about him as a starting quarterback for the Vikings right now? He, he's brought he's lit a fire. He's brought an excitement there that these guys have been starving for. And Kirk Cousins obviously offered these guys leadership and veteran experience. And the Vikings went out and paid for it. And then all of a sudden, within a week's time, you get brought onto a team and you're starting four days later and you lead the team to victory. And then all of a sudden, that belief meter kicks in. And so here you go. Joshua, Joshua Dobbs is the starting quarterback until further notice. And We'll see where it goes from here. I don't know if he's the future of the Minnesota Vikings, but, you know, he's definitely um, brought in success immediately. It is a great story. Uh, He does have some issues hanging out of the football. That entire Viking team does. They lead the league in fumbles with 21. They haven't lost all those fumbles, but they're key ones, and it it hurt them against Denver on the road. Uh, They kept kept on uh, holding the Broncos to field goals until they couldn't, and that was the end of that. Well, I know Kevin O'Connell, their coach, earlier in the year, he had to threaten the offensive players about fumbling. And he said, whomever, you know, is a repeated fumbler, you're going to come on the sidelines to me and I'm going to have no hesitation of pulling you. So that better elevate the concentration level if you're a guy that's fortunate enough 
fortunate enough to touch with the football during the game. And so, you know, ball security is something that we hear talked about, preached about, coached every single day of football. Yes, and uh, they they do a heck of a job, though, uh, getting their quarterbacks ready, and that's a perfect case right there with a guy uh, just trying to not – have other systems sneak into his psyche while he's calling the plays in the huddle. And you told a story about you know, Doug Flutie coming in, saying the language of a, of, a, of a scheme that was in another city, and you guys are all looking at him like he's uh, losing his mind, like he's, you know, because he was, it was just, you know, when you, what you always say, Tom. Fatigue makes cowards of us all, and also make you <laughs> think was, differently. <laughs> well, you know what? Depending upon the offensive system you're in, sometimes it's numbered even to the right and odd to the left. But some coaches switch it purposely and odd to the right and even to the left. And if you just come out of a system where it's the opposite, a lot of time you can call a play and you can revert back to the whole number that you're more familiar with than the new system you're learning. Tom, uh, what other observations do you have about uh, what you saw on tape this week? Uh, I know we, we've we've tackled a bunch of different stuff, but anything stick out that maybe is under the radar a little bit about a player? I mean, Jervon Dexter, I think, is getting more and more pressure up the middle, getting his hands up. Obviously, that tip led to an interception on uh, the Tremaine Edmonds. Uh, what else? I mean, there's there's got to be something else or maybe something you're not seeing enough of around the board. Well, you know, one thing about Javon Dexter, he's using his asset. He's got great length. He's got really good footwork of wide steps that can make uh, an offensive lineman almost miss him because he's moving from one specific spot to the next. I think that I don't want to, you know, lose out the change of the offensive line. You know, I'm always interested to see how Nate Davis does. How does he recover after weeks off of his feet due to injury? And then Tevin Jenkins moving to the opposite balance of being a right guard. Now he's a left guard, left-handed stance. You're, every A lot is different. They really came in and did a nice job. And so I think if you can have consistency with both guards and both tackles for a period of time, you're going to see continuous growth for the whole offensive system because of the offensive line. All right, we'll pick up the conversation with AA Anthony Adams. He'll join us next. This is Bears Weekly on ESPN Chicago and the Bears Radio Network. This is Bears Weekly with the voice of the Bears for 23 years, Jeff Joniak, on the Bears Radio Network. This segment of Bears Weekly is brought to you by CBW. People to get it with Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak. We're shuffling around a little bit with Cole Komet now on the line. We'll get the spice at about the 45 before the top of the hour. Cole, thanks for checking in. How are you feeling tonight? Feeling good. Not too bad. Uh, you know, still trying to get over the, uh, the game on Sunday, but, you know, not doing too bad. Yeah. How, do, how, how does one do this? Because uh, it's it's been uh, tough clearly uh, in the last couple of years uh, for everybody on the team, but uh, especially a, a guy like you, a leader on the team, a, a starter, and a guy from this this area who grew up with the Bears. So is it, is it a little harder for a guy like yourself? Yeah, it's been tough. I mean, you know, you definitely see how, how we've been progressing, you know, going back to last year. And, you know, you really felt that this was a game that, you know, we took over from the beginning. And, you know, we had a lot of confidence going into and uh, not to be able to uh, pull it out was, was tough for sure. Hey, Cole, being a local guy, and as I was, do you drag any guys home with you for Thanksgiving dinner and uh, let your let your mom fill their bellies? Yeah, we, we, we always let them know there's an open invite, so uh, guys know that, and, you know, they're always welcome at the Komet household. So, yeah, always let guys know that, and uh, everyone's always more than welcome to come by. Uh, that's good. Hey, Cole, so at Notre Dame, you were, I think, at like 33-5 and five or 33-6 and six record, and you had a tremendous amount of success. Is there anything you learned in that locker room at that time in your developing football career that the positive information is transferable to the experiences that you're going through that maybe you can draw back or even give some of the younger guys a little advice? Yeah, well, it's so different, you know, uh, when you're at a when you're at a Notre, like when I was back at Notre Dame and you know we were winning as much as we did. Um, you know, there's not many times you're feeling you know you're you're going through a big losing stretch and. Um, so that, that's kind of new to me now and trying to, trying to deal with that in the NFL. But, um, you know, you, you just kind of look back and I think what doesn't change from teams and when it, whether it's in high school, peewee, college or in the NFL is, uh, just, just establishing a winning culture and 
you know, that's something that we got to break through and be able to do here. And uh, we've had our opportunities, but we just got to be able to finish these things out. And I just really believe that once we get these things going and we can string a couple together, I think uh, that winning, that winning culture becomes contagious. You know, when you look at the process of a season, when you go through a couple different quarterbacks, Justin Bajan, now back to Justin, is there anything between Justin Bajan that changes about your game, or is it all information towards the system that you installed and you just go about your business accordingly? No, it is a little different just because there's there are two totally different types of players. And, um, you know, I think with Justin, you know, you're able to do some things in the run game that's that's really unique that you're really not doing with any other quarterbacks in the NFL. So that, that, that changes some things up for sure. And, you know, what you kind of do in the pass game with getting Justin on the move and the run and all that type of stuff, it, it changes for sure. And, um, you know, they're both two different guys. So you got to be able to adjust your game a little bit here and there, uh, depending on who's playing. Um, but that's just also part of being part of being in the NFL. Cole Komet, our guest here on Bears Weekly on ESPN Chicago and the Bears Radio Network with Jeff and Tom, uh, the veteran tight end. Uh, one more catch to 50, and I know uh, stats and all that don't mean much when uh, a team is not winning, or even if it is for that matter, but uh, you're also charting your own progress in this, in this career of yours, and it's, uh, it's been really good among all NFL tight ends. You're second in touchdowns, sixth in catches, fifth in first downs. Uh, I know... Every aspect of your game is not just about those stats because the blocking is significant, as it was in New Orleans when you had zero targets in Week 7. So where your trajectory is going, are you, are you pleased individually with your own maturity, progress, and um, production at, this, at the tight end position? Yeah, no, I've been, I've been happy with it. I think, uh, you know, when you look at the beginning of my career to now, it's just been, you know, steady progress. And, you know, there's always ups and downs, uh, from back then till now, but uh, you just kind of deal with those, ride with those waves. And, um, you know, I've, I've definitely been happy with my progress so far. So, um, you know, like you said, not only in the uh, in the pass game, but in the run game as well. And I also think my pass blocking has gotten really good, you know, over the past couple of years too. So, um, yeah, just tr- always trying to improve yourself all around, and I think I've been doing that so far. I'm also keeping the tabs on your yak yardage because I, I think it can really – explode when you get the ball in your hands because you're not an easy tackle in any way shape or form uh you've been you know you're you could set a, a career high this year if you keep going the way you do uh it, that's important to you is it is it you feel you set a tone when you catch the ball and are hard to bring down like that for the offense yeah i think that also you know i, I want to feed into our culture as well and you you see our running backs and how they run and you know i, I think that can play a role in that as well so whenever i get the ball i always want to be a guy that's fallen forward for the first down. And, you know, I'm always telling those linemen when I catch that football, you know, make sure you guys are running after me so we can get a few extra yards because I'm going to stay up as long as I can. Hey, Cole, this is the first time you're playing the team, second time in the same season. And the first time you were targeted three times with two catches. Uh, is there a suggestion box in Hallis Hall that you can go to and say, this is from Cole Komet, I would like to be targeted, maybe double that amount or closer to ten times? <laughs> yeah, I threw it in the suggestion box. I don't, I hopefully somebody sees it, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep letting them know this week. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, uh, Flores, Flores brings, brings a bunch of different stuff, uh, you know, defensively, whether it's, you know, bringing all out or going drop eight. So there's a lot of different things that we ought to be ready for and a lot of adjustments that Justin will have to make. So, um, you know, as we get further in the game plan this week, it'll be uh, – It'll be interesting to see kind of what we got in and, and you know how we're going to handle all those those blitzes that he brings or if, if they end up dropping eight, you know how we're going to handle those as well too. So you played him in week six, and now you're you're going to play him in week 12. Do you guys venture back to the Bears when you played him the first time plus the last couple of games they played, or do you guys kind of focus on the last few games that they played when you watch preparation tape? Well, yeah, I think when you look at them, uh, they've, they've been doing a really good job defensively uh, really since we played them. And obviously they did really well um, against us the first time they played. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can expect something similar in terms of game plan wise. Um, so, yeah, you, we definitely going to look at that, look at what they've done recently, look at what they've done well, and you kind of just take that all into account. All right, final moments with Cole Komet. Uh, so a Tuesday night after a loss, you got a Monday night, then you got the bye week. Uh I, do you guys go out with the offensive linemen by chance? Do you, are there are there the unit uh, dinners or not? What are we doing? Yeah, we do we we do them on Thursdays. We do. Out there Thursdays. Okay. How how have those been? They've been good. 
those have been great. Those have been great. Those are always a lot of fun. Um, I actually, I was able to host one of the dinners a couple weeks ago, which was a first time for somebody non-offensive lineman. But, you know, I, I do like to consider myself kind of part of that group here and there. Yeah. How do they how do they pick who pays when? Cuz for us it was the highest draft choice started and then it kind of wind wound down to the oldest veteran would pay the last one. How do you guys Yeah, do so it? I think we actually flip it. So we got the I think the oldest guys were doing it first and it goes down to the youngest. Interesting. Where'd you yeah. go? Where'd you where go? Did, where did we go when I took him? Yeah. We went to uh DeZoto in Highwood. Great spot. Great Italian spot. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, also, are you going to help that out was, that, at that all? Was, that was Clyde's spot. Clyde's spot. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, are you going to do any Thanksgiving prep at all for your family? Oh, gee, I don't know if I'll have the time. <laughs> I think my mom will just end up taking over. She she always loves cooking, and, you know, if my grandmother's having, I think, some people over, too, so they, they end up taking over and then my grandmother and my mom do all that. So uh, I'll leave it to them. I feel like if I was in charge of anything, I'd mess something up. <laughs> yeah, possibly. So it's best to do what you do best. That's catch the football and block big bodies. Got to move those Vikings out of the way on uh, Monday night. Should be fun to watch, though. Bears and Vikings on Monday night. Again, the national attention will be on the Bears and the Vikings. And uh, I know players love that. So good luck and uh, have a great game, buddy. Awesome. Thanks, I appreciate Cole. you guys. Thank you. Cole Komet here on Bears Weekly. When we come back. We'll be joined by Spice Adams here on Bears Weekly on ESPN Chicago and the Bears Radio Network. This is Bears Weekly with the voice of the Bears for 23 years, Jeff Joniak on the Bears Radio Network. Hey, you want VIP access to every Bears home game? Exclusive seating, sideline credentials, and more are now available. Get the ultimate VIP fan package this season by visiting ChicagoBearsVIP.com. A VIP is joining us right now. A patient man, Anthony Adams, with Tom and Jeff here on Bears Weekly. How you doing, Double A? Did it just say you've been covering the Bears for twenty three years? No, what? That's, no, that's no, the play by play part of it. Is that twenty seven? Yeah, but you know, I started covering the, my first assignments were Bears training camp circa nineteen eighty five, and I was afraid to interview Whoa, Tom there at that time. Man, yeah, I'm only I'm only 22, so I mean you've been doing this as long as I've been alive. <laughs> well, I, I was fortunate to call some of your exciting moments as a player, so I feel <laughs> honored to have done that. What are you up to, big fella? What are you doing? What's going on? Uh, I'm living the dream, man. I'm a volunteer coach in that my son's high school on a wrestling team, man. That's all I'm doing, man. Oh man, I thought you're doing the football. So we we got together, Tom, and. I, you know, when you were talking to me the other day on the podcast, Tom, that you had also half a dozen guys from the Chicago area that were on that team of yours, and then you got a bunch of guys on our team here, and then you got all these guys uh, in the Chicago dropping anchor and raising families and building the homes and building post-football right. careers, and we got all these uh, now volunteer coaches or head coaches in the high school area all yeah. together a couple weeks ago, and that'll be out uh, sometime in the in the near future, uh, that was an unbelievable conversation. But you were helping out uh, there over at Stevenson for the football team too on the defensive line where your son plays and and doing the wrestling yeah. thing. But uh, did you did you get a kick out of that session? It was a good forty five fifty minutes, and man, at times it, it got serious. It was emotional. Yeah. It was uh, deep. It flew it flew by, man. It didn't seem like it was forty five minutes, man. It was it was a good time, man. And I learned a lot from my teammates. Like I didn't know, J Mac Miles was like, it's like she was great at flag football. You were saying, right, right, what? Right. She made him play. I said, yep. wow, man, these some good stories, man. You People know, I, I, in, we man. we love your story too, and I know Tom has something similar. Tell the story because you you cracked me up, and maybe we've told it before, but it's always worth telling again. Uh, growing up in Detroit, your mom was getting uh, getting a little annoyed with a young Anthony Adams. Tell the story about football practice. Oh, man. So I have been breaking these Nintendo controllers left and right. My mom got tired of buying these remote controls. So she said, you got to find a way to channel this energy. So 
And, you know, in my neighborhood in Detroit, it was all about the, the Pistons. So we always played basketball. So she was like, no, nah, you got to play football. And I'm like, no, I don't want to play. So one day she just dropped me off at Martin Luther King High School. I wasn't even dressed. I had on jeans, shorts. I had on oh. some some regular <laughs> shoes. It might have been flip-flops. I don't even know. But she said, get out and go introduce yourself to that coach over there. And so I'm looking because it's, it's several coaches over there. So I'm like, I'm trying to figure out which one she's talking about. So I turn around, look at my mom. I say, mom, which coach? Skirt! <laughs> See, the force of her hitting the gas is what closed the door. And uh, so I introduced myself to the coach, man. And I've been playing for 18 years, man, in high school, college, and pro. So uh, mom knows best. Mom knows best. You know, Spice, just a similar story. So the, the, when Pop Warner football became uh, in, came in our neighborhood, the coach there, Rocky Carnegie, came over to my mom and said, you have two sons, I would like them to play Pop Warner football. And so there's no kid that grows up that he has his sights on being an offensive lineman in the middle of August right. out in Pershing Field. <laughs> so every single day when I, I started going, I used to – be crying every day before uh-huh. practice and so my mom would get me in the car she didn't care she, I would be crying all the way and she would push me out of the door and say you'll stop crying when you see your friends and she yeah. would she would do the same thing push me out drive away and then be back to pick me up later so it, it was kind of funny because you know it's just that uh you know the uh, just how persuasive your mom is in what your sports life becomes if I didn't have her, it, it would have never turned out that way. Oh, there. Let me tell you. There, she just dropped me off that one time. And then after that, I was hooked. Like, it only took that one time. So when she came to pick me up, I gave her the biggest hug. I said, Ma, <laughs> thank you so much. We got to be back here at 3, but I want to be here at 2. I want to get here early so I can learn how to put my pads on correctly, like all this other stuff. So I didn't, I didn't know how to put pads. They told me to line up at guard. True story. I said, point guard or shooting guard? I had no idea <laughs> what a guard was. They told me to line up at tackle. I'm like, I thought that's what you do when you're on defense. At least I know that much. But you talking about tackle? No, that's what you do when you're on defense. Oh, man, they were having a field day with me. man. I well, had I, absolutely no idea. Brother, two years older than me, and he became uh, an, just an unbelievable fullback. And so I'm watching him. He's carrying the football. He's having fun. Kids ta- can't tackle him because he's too big. So I go, yeah. all right, that's what I'm going to be. But then when I walked up there, he goes, son, you're an offensive tackle. And so it's not the same. You know, when you're that age going out into that field in the middle of August when it's 90 degrees out, you know, not everybody wants to be an offensive lineman. They didn't. They didn't have any tackle eligible plays for you there. No, no. This was this was real. This was, this was real eleven man football. <laughs> hey, hey, Spice. When you when you said that you're living the dream. So when people see you out in public, because when I I just recently saw a piece with you and uh in down, or, um, Yannick Ngakwe in the mm-hmm. Ben's. Uh, segment so when people see you do they call you spice do they call you double a or do they call you anthony oh they call me everything man i don't mind either one of them you know uh, when i was with the bears everybody called me double a and um you know i've had the nickname spice since high school so uh i answered to them all man it's just sometimes when people do call me anthony i think something is wrong though so that's know, what i, I say yeah, yeah, something got to be wrong, man. Like, dang, what? I'm thinking in my head, like, what did I do? I know I put everything up the way it's supposed to be. Like, so, yeah, but I, you know, I, I enjoy it all, man. Um, it's, it's, it's a privilege to, you know, just get a nickname. You know what right. I mean? Especially, especially one that you that you like. At first, I didn't always like it though, but you know, it, it, it's cool that I have a nickname that actually fits. Spice, let me ask. I want to. I got a football question for you about defensive line play and defensive linemen specifically. So you see that your body type, and then you look at the body type of a, a rookie, Javon Dexter. If you were mm-hmm. coaching the both of you guys, would you coach each other the technique the same, or would you coach the technique according to what your assets are in terms of size, strength, structure? leverage and everything else that goes along with the difference of your two body types 
Yeah, you have to. I mean, it's going to be hard for a guy like Javon to get up under somebody, whereas, you know, I'm 5'11". That's that's my bread and butter. Like, I'm going to get up under you. So I think you would teach him more explosion and getting off the ball. Because if you get off the ball, then, you know, you're so powerful. He's so young. He has so much potential that, you know, you may not make the play, but you can disrupt it. And, uh, you know, I, I tell my son and, and other players all the time, like, if there are 70 plays in the game, you're not going to make 70 tackles. But you can affect the play. You can make the quarterback throw it early. You can get in his face. You can tip the pass. You can sack him. It could be a sack fumble. It's, it's so many things you can do to, um, you know, d- be disruptive and also help your linebackers where if you, you know, take a puller out, then, you know, that linebacker is going to be free. So there's a lot of things you can do up front where, you know, you don't necessarily have to make the play, but you can be disruptive. Anthony Adams, our guest, a couple of more moments with the former Bears defensive lineman and now all things entertainment, including uh, he's still doing the podcast with Shaq and all those folks. Yeah, yeah, Shaq, Michelle Turner. Uh, it's, it's great, man. I'm, I'm having a good time, me and Shaq been knowing each other now for a couple of years, maybe five, six years. And uh, he said, hey, man, one day we're going to work. Say, so, uh, okay. You know, I thought it was going to be one of those things where it's like, you know, you have your people call my people and things like that. But things started going in motion. And uh, I said, oh, man, this is really happening. Like, Shaq is not playing around. Who are maybe your people? Hot. I'm sorry? If you got, if, who are your – if you got people, who are your my, people? My wife. My wife is my people. <laughs> my wife and uh, my guy Eddie, man, Eddie Petruca, man, he's a local guy out here, man. We got a uh, we got a special thing going on, man. It's uh, like I say, man, I'm I'm living the dream, man. I'm blessed, and I I thank God to be able to do the things that I do, and also be around for my kids. Well, you make people laugh, and you give people a a, a good escape from the everyday uh, with your entertainment value. But uh, overall, just you're 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 a wonderful. Wonderful guy. Glad to call you a friend. Uh, real quick, did you see last night in the Eagles-Chiefs game, Jalen Carter going? Oh, my gosh. I was hoping yeah. he caught that. Yeah. So Mahomes yeah. the spike, and he dove under and almost caught it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, man. Did, did, I you ever, did you ever try I that? Have, I would have drop kicked my TV if he, if he would have caught that. <laughs> Oh my! That is a dream, man. You don't. That, oh, Jeff. Oh my gosh, man. That is stuff you dream about. He almost had that. That yeah. that is crazy to even think. That's crazy to even try. First of all, within a whisker, <laughs> within a whisker. Oh my! Is hey. that that is one of the greatest attempts I've yes, ever seen in my life. I agree. I agree. And usually those things. On a on a, a thing like that or a kneel down, it might cost from a bit a, From a rookie, too, man. <laughs> from a rookie. I know. Oh, All right, man. Double A. Hey, we're going to cut you loose. We really appreciate oh, you, you coming on. Excited, Thank you excited, man. We're talking about football. <laughs> yeah, I know, cut, but hey, the clock's off. ticking. The clock's ticking, and we got to hit a break. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk to you again. All right. How about it? All right. Thanks, appreciate it, buddy. This is ESPN 1000 and the Bears Radio Network. This is Bears Weekly with the voice of the Bears for 23 years, Jeff Joniak, on the Bears Radio Network. All right, appreciate you coming along for the ride. Uh, we got to tear out of here, though. So much to talk about, uh, but uh, we'll get it to you uh, on Sunday. Or excuse me, Monday night in Minnesota. Tommy, Vikings, Bears, should be a good time. We'll see you then. Don't show up on Sunday, Jeff. No, no. Well, we'll be there on Sunday, right. but I won't be calling the game on Sunday. Hey, shout out to College of DuPage, by the way. They're facing Rochester Community and Tech College Saturday, going for their third straight national championship at COD out in the western suburbs uh, Saturday, December 2nd. Good luck to you guys. Appreciate everybody. Thanks to Cole Komet and Anthony Adams. For Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. Thanks for listening. This has been Bears Weekly on the new radio home of the Bears, ESPN Chicago. Good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Chicago Bears Network presentation of Bears Weekly, hosted by the mayor of Bearsville, Jeff Juniak, and Surfmaster Tom Thayer. Podcasts are available on the Chicago Bears official app. Bears Weekly has been brought to you by Apple Podcasts, Bet Rivers, IGS Energy, and Miller Lite.